Uh, hello there. Um, I have a uh, Hall's Forma 372 XP here, and I thought I would, uh, I was in the middle of cleaning this thing up after working it. Thought I'd make a short video. Um, when I was investigating buying this saw, I had a lot of questions that I couldn't answer on the internet. Most of them I could, but some I couldn't really get an answer from YouTube videos or whatever. Um, so I thought I would answer some of my own questions uh, right now with this saw. Um, I got this saw from uh, Jess Ray at uh, bluesaws.com. I paid $300 for it, uh, not including the bar and chain. And um, my impressions right now is I got an excellent, excellent deal. And uh, I will go into some uh, things to, that, that, that need improvement, kind of some, some issues I had and that sort of thing. But I feel like I got a, I feel like I got a good deal. And I also feel like that, uh, that Jess is an excellent guy to work with, uh, just in case you, uh, are looking for a dealer to buy one of these from. Uh, so I just thought I would cover a couple of questions I had. Um, I had seen before I bought this saw, uh, a lot of folks seem to complain about uh, chain tensioners. I'm not really sure. Uh, a lot of the review, reviews and, and, and posts and things I saw were specific to steel, not necessarily specific to this saw itself. Um, but when this saw arrived, uh, the chain tensioner um, uh, scared me, I guess you could say. <laughs> um, but I, I, I learned some tips here, and I'm going to share those. Tip number one, when you tension this chain, I've got these nuts just barely tightened, and as soon as that hits the, 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 the outer uh, chain cover here, um, this is an aluminum chain cover, by the way, as soon as it makes contact, stop, stop tightening. Um, otherwise, you could have some issues with this chain tensioner. But that's plenty to hold everything in, in place, and uh, as long as everything's loose on these, these nuts, I don't know if you're gonna be able to see it on the video, but the chain tightens up just fine. Loosens up, tightens up just fine. Um, if you have these torqued down just a little bit, kind of to what I'm used to with the saws I have, uh, most of my saws use the old fashioned, or, or all of my saws use the old fashioned tensioner up front, and those can really, uh, you know, move that chain no matter how tight, you know, or, or if you have these a little bit tighter than you should to, to make an adjustment. Um, but this uh, side version is a little more finicky. Um, so I'm gonna pull these nuts off and show you what it looks like on the inside here. I think I dropped that one. Um, like I said, this is metal, aluminum cover. Uh, it's really dirty. Like I said, I was pulling this apart to clean it after running it a few hours the other day, cutting up some really dead dry oak. Um, what I noticed was I needed to put some grease on the threads here and what I did was just work it back and forth. I just used a screwdriver, um, a drill may be faster and easier to do, but once you work those threads in a little bit and if you, you remember the tip of not getting those nuts too tight, this works great. It works fine. No problems at all. Um, so that's, you know, one, one thing to point out there. Um, so I'll go ahead and pop this off. I had questions about the bar too. Um, this is this is a Hall's Forma bar. This is a 20 inch. Um, it's, it doesn't have the replaceable tip. It is a sprocket sprocket tip. Um, so far, I like this bar. I've cut um, approximately three cords of oak. I don't have everything split up and neatly stacked to to measure it and get an exact number, but I, I guess it to be about three cords. Um, and and um, I'm just now at this point, I can feel, where was that? There's a slight little burr forming there. And well, I thought I felt one on the other side. Oh, there it is, slight little burr there. Um, so I'll, uh, you know, as I'm cleaning up, I'll file that down and keep that square. Um, and that's actually a good tip if you're not familiar with, with bar maintenance. If you start to develop a burr here, which you will over time, you wanna file that down and try to keep that nice and square and straight. 
and you'll cut smoother and you'll also cut straighter through a uh, through a log um, but yeah um, I think the the bar is pretty decent it's probably not the same quality I'm used to with Oregon I typically buy Oregon bars and it's probably not up there but it's it's good enough it was a lot cheaper than an Oregon um, this is the Hall's form of chain um, I'm actually pretty impressed with this chain um, I typically only buy Oregon chains and I usually buy the full chisel chain like this is from Oregon um, I I didn't, you know, I haven't done any sort of scientific comparison or anything like that, but I, I feel like this chain um, is, is right up there as far as quality with that Oregon chain. Uh, it sharpens about the same, feels about the same when I'm cutting it with a file, and it holds an edge about the same, I've noticed. Um, so um, I've, I'm, I'm pretty impressed with these, and I would definitely buy another Hall's Warma chain. I actually had some over here. Uh, another couple of boxes of those so that's I, I, I didn't want to buy too many until I kind of had a chance to investigate it um, one issue I did have with this saw when I first got the saw the oiler was it, it was it's kind of hard to explain the oiler worked but it was kind of it would work periodically so it didn't oil that well it would oil a little but not that well um, Jess sent me another one uh, replacement which was also a, a, a Hall's former Hall's forma part and um, swapped them out and it works a lot better but I thought I would kind of show you where that's at um, this saw does have a rim sprocket if you've never ran a sprock ran a saw with a rim sprocket uh, you'll fall in love with these these are great much easier to replace and you don't have to replace this whole this uh, whole clutch cover that way you just replace just the rim and you're ready to go and this clutch is inboard so that's even easier to get to and so forth and pull the clutch cover off um, here's the clutch um, so far no problems at all there uh, the oiler is underneath there's a screw here and here I didn't uh, loosen this off but uh, Jess even sent me a tool here to, to pull that pull that clutch with um, I didn't do that ahead of time, so I'm not going to pull it off here. But uh, the oiler has two screws, and then let's go ahead and take off this plate so you can see the full one screw there. Plate comes off. There's a brass tube that feeds oil through the bar that goes into the oiler. Um, you do not have to, once you pull the clutch off, you do not have to. Uh, disassemble this chain brake. I've seen videos on eBay or eBay. Sorry about that on YouTube uh, Where folks are disassembling the chain brake to get the clutch. I mean to get to the oiler um, You do not have to do that um, all, all that I did was pop the chain brake forward that gives a little gap here And then you can grab the spring keep in mind this clutch this uh, um, Yeah, the clutch will be out of the way and that, that little amount that you can pull that spring up gives you plenty, trust me, I, I did it twice, plenty of room to, to pull that clut, that uh, oiler out with the tube still attached. You can slide it under, slide the new one in, and you're ready to go. Um, so that those were a couple of questions I had in that area. Um, I've seen some reviews on the steel uh, chain brake levers that uh, apparently they're kind of weak and they break. and this one to me feels pretty good i've used it several times uh actually used it once for real while i was sawing uh, i got a little kickback which uh i usually don't but uh being un you know kind of unfamiliar with the saw i got a kickback by accident and it stopped the it popped the uh um popped the brake and it did work did function for me um it doesn't feel real flimsy to me I, I mean it, it feels like others I've had I don't currently have a saw with a working chain brake most of mine are too old they were uh, built before chain brakes were invented um, but uh, it, it seems fine on this saw I also have the full wrap handle I was a little curious about how that was going to work out I didn't know if this was going to be a flimsy kind of uh, you know cheap knockoff handle I can say this is very sturdy very sturdy I've got every bit of faith in that. Um, 
can't can't feel any flexing or anything in that while I'm using it. So that's a uh, you know a good piece there. No no need to worry. Um, you can kind of tell maybe. I don't know if it's going to show up on the video or not. Some of the plastic doesn't quite meet up. You can see a little bit of a discrepancy there and how the plastic on this filter cover goes around the the top of the saw. Um, I haven't really noticed any chips or dust get in there, you know, through that crack. Um, so it, you know, it's just kind of, it, it's more cosmetic than anything. Um, I was, I had, I was some, had some curiosity about these clips and how well those worked. I mistakenly thought that these were plastic. They are not. They're actually steel. They're spring steel over molded with plastic. So that's not a, that's not just a, a really thin piece of plastic holding that on. That's a piece, those are, those are metal clips. And I think maybe if I position it right, you may be able to see on this one, or maybe I can tap it there. You can hear that, hear the metal. It's even, you see the screwdriver's magnetized, so it's proof that that's, uh, that's metal there. Um, the filter is attached with a just a standard wing nut. I believe the real saws, the Husqvarna's, have a plastic thumb screw. Um, I'm old school, so I would prefer the wing nut. I'm fine with that being there. Um, I ran this saw for, let's see, about three hours, pretty much nonstop Saturday. And I have not cleaned this out other, you know, what, what little bit of dust and dirt is in that's in there is what was there. You can see there's a little bit in the filter, you know, it, it's, it's kind of hard to see, but you can, you can pop some of that out. That's as, that's as much dust and dirt as I built up in these oaks I were, that I was uh, working on. Uh, one of them had quite a bit of rot, so I was getting a lot of powder dust. There wasn't really chips that were coming out. It was just powder. And uh, I was kind of surprised how, how clean that stayed. It stayed, stayed nice and clean in there. <clears throat> uh, let's see. I think I have everything loosened up. Pull the top off. That's what I, I couldn't really, back when I was looking, get a, a good look at kind of the setup of where the carburetors at and so forth so I thought that might be of interest in a video um, the flywheel is actually sucking air in through these uh, through these grate it blows it up there's a plastic uh, channel here little vent system that blows air into this box which then feeds through the air filter that's how this all breathes or how it gets air it does not draw air from around this cover, anything like that. The, all, the air is actually drawing off the clean side of the saw. Uh, some people call that, you know, the clean side. Um, does not have a throttle lock. Um, I, you know, I have, I, I'm, a, I'm a big Echo fan and my Echos have throttle locks. So that was a little bit different for me. Um, I do like the fact that it has a simple start stop switch and there's a choke lever. Um, I, I don't really want to knock steel, but I really, I'm not a fan of that steel uh, thumb switch that's over here that's your run, stop, choke, start. Um, I've worked on enough steel chainsaws and you know had that little brass piece fall out and, and not know how to get that back in the right way, and I, I really don't like those. I really like a saw like I said, like an Echo that has a separate start-stop, separate choke, and a throttle lock. The throttle lock, this, this saw does actually have a throttle lock, but it's built into the carburetor. Once I pull the choke out, push the choke back in, it's locked. And if I pull the trigger, you'll be able to hear it unlocks at that point. So I pull that out, and then you know the starting procedure would be to pull a few times. It's gonna pop, push that in, once it cranks, it's going to have a little bit of throttle applied, and you squeeze the trigger, and now you're back down to just your regular idle. Uh, which, that's fine with me. I, you know, I, I would I would really prefer the, the lock on the trigger, but at least we do have a separate choke, throttle lock, and switch. I'm like I said, I'm I kind of finicky about some things. Um, 
This carburetor is an HLIC. That's a, that's the Chinese carburetor. This is not a Walbro. It's a Walbro knockoff uh, carburetor. It's 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 okay, I suppose. Um, one thing I did notice that was good, I was having trouble getting this thing dialed in, and so I ordered the gasket diaphragm kit for uh, the actual Walbro carburetor. KTN HD is the kit number. Fits perfectly. So if you're you know just in case you wanted to know, that fits perfectly. I put that in the carburetor. The performance improved as far as the smoothness of how the, the engine would run and so forth. But I noticed um, over the course of yesterday or, 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 or um, Saturday and then, and then the, the next day, I, I played with this for a little bit on Sunday afternoon after church. I discovered that what was actually happening uh, had two problems. One was that 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 uh, the gaskets and diaphragm inside that carburetor weren't the best, and the other issue was, if you can see this, my low screw here is backing out on me. Um, as I ran this on Saturday for that two or three hour period, I had this dialed in perfectly when I started, and I I, I kept up with the revolutions that it took. Um, it's something like uh, one in five eighths, I believe, is is what what this uh, worked out optimal, on, you know, on this particular saw. Um, and uh, by the end of the day, I was having trouble with the saw idling. It would only idle for a few seconds. It would die. Then it would be a little hard to start. I had to do a few more pulls than I would really, you know, want to do. So I, I screwed the. I, I suspected that there was, this was happening. Uh, I. I screwed the screw in to bottom it out and it had moved uh, about a half a turn. A little, maybe a little more than half a turn. Uh, I repeated it the next day, splitting up some big rounds. I had several rounds and I was using the saw just to split those into quarters to make them easier to, to get up on the splitter. Um, and I ran about an hour and it moved again, but about maybe an eighth of a turn. It just, a, just a little bit of a turn got it back to where it was where it should be. So that's something I'm working through, trying to decide whether, um, uh, I like kind of playing with the carburetor, trying to get this one to work. That's something that I'm kind of, you know, something about me. I just want to make this one work. Um, at some point I'll probably give up and I, I've seen these, the actual, I don't have the part number um, for the correct wall burrow carburetor but they are on available on Amazon uh, free shipping with you have if you have prime free shipping 80 bucks for the actual the real deal carburetor um, so if if I can't fix the low screw side that'll be my next move I'm, I'm not going to go back with the Chinese I'll just get the $80 Walbro and be good um, I had some questions before I bought this saw related to the pull start I had read some reviews and saw some videos. Again, I think these were kind of geared towards steel, but it made me kind of curious if it was a common problem across all Hall's Forma saws. Um, this this one so far is rock solid. Uh, you know, I've had the carburetor problem, so I've been pulling on this quite a few times. Uh, the plastic on you know on this part here seems pretty. It, it's it's sturdy enough. I mean. Uh, sh sure, it could be made out of aluminum or something like that, but it would add more weight. But it, it's 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 sufficient, in my opinion. Um, this to me reminds me a lot of um, the design that's that's used a lot on Echo. Um, I haven't broken into a new Echo. All my Echos are really old, but this is a similar design that they use. They have the metal paws on the flywheel here, and then there's actually you have four catch locations for those paws so they can catch either here or there. Um, spring seems pretty sturdy. I did have one gentleman post to a, um, a comment I made on Facebook that said the, that uh, his plastic post where the screw is attached broke. Um, his short-term solution was to drill through and use a machine screw and, and then he replaced this with an actual Husqvarna piece. But um, it feels fine. That 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 would probably be the only way that would fail if that post broke. 
Um, I don't I don't see an issue with these metal you know metal paws on the flywheel. The springs seem like they have a, a decent amount of tension to always keep them pushed in and in the correct location. So I don't really foresee a problem there. Um, the coil is working really good so far. Um, I've read some of the Hulls Farmer coils aren't the best in the world. Um, did want to point out the wire to me feels a little uh, hard to explain. It's almost like the insulation is a little squishy, I guess you could say, especially around this boot. And you may be able to see in the video, I don't know if you can or not, but part of the spring that goes around the cap, the, the plug end of the, of the um, spark plug, when I, the first time I pulled this off, it was really hard to get off and part of that spring actually pushed through the boot. Um, but it still runs fine, still connects fine. Um, it's actually a lot easier to get off now after that broke, after that uh, uh, broke through. But um, uh, that that's you know one thing I had an issue with. Um, if you're curious what the inside of the cylinder and piston look like, I have another video where I ran a, um, I have a little um, endoscope or whatever you want to call it, ran it through there to look at the engine internals just to kind of record what this all looked like when I got it. And then a year from now, I'll do it again. Um, so you can take a look at that. Um, uh, oh, the decompression valve, I was rotating it around for that. I've also read and saw reviews that these decompression valves are junk. <laughs> you know, it's what most people say. This one seems to work fine for me. I haven't had any problems with it. I've been using it uh, to start the saw. At first, I didn't because I was afraid, uh, you know, based on, on the re reviews I've seen. But I started using it, and it works fine. Um, uh, I, I, I read several people on Facebook say that... Uh, they had had uh, cylinder damage or piston damage from one of these. I'm not really sure if they meant uh, this is causing an air leak and getting excessive air into the fuel mixture, uh, you know, leaning it out. I wasn't sure if that's what they meant or if they meant a mechanical piece of this valve was getting into the cylinder. Um, I popped this out just to see if, you know, is that possible? And um, you'll be able to see if you if you look at the other video, the hole, the the through hole into the cylinder wall for this valve is about an eighth of an inch diameter. I didn't have a good way to measure it, but I think it's about an eighth of an inch. And the um, uh, the the plug or, or whatever you want it, to, it's kind of a funnel shaped plug piece that's that's in the end of this valve um, is a quarter inch diameter. So. I wasn't really sure if that's what they were saying in the posts or not, but as far as this plug, uh, this uh, valve, um, I I'd say it's impossible for that piece to make its way, a quarter inch uh, diameter part to make its way through an eighth inch hole. I don't think that's going to happen. Um, but maybe it's more of an air leak sort of thing. But I have been using this and, and haven't had any issues with it. Um, starts fine. Actually, it seems to start easier. And not just from a compression standpoint. I, I mean, I know it makes it, it makes makes the pull easier, but it actually seems to, uh, you know, to fire easier under that less lesser compression. Maybe that's just my imagination. Um, uh, the muffler, um, no issues there. I did pull this off. Uh, I was I was going. My intent was to pull off uh, a spark arrestor if there had if there was any sort of spark arrestor or screen in there. There was not, and this is actually just a hollow can. There's nothing, there's no baffles or anything in there. Hollow can with this tube uh, welded on. Um, everything seems pretty sturdy um, as far as this, you know, this black bracket, which I, I suppose its intent is to kind of uh, prevent that uh, muffler from shaking around too much doing that sort of sort of problem. Oh, uh, this reminds me of another thing. When I was mentioning the, the tensioner, something I thought was interesting. There's a hole here for, I'm assuming, for one of those old fashioned tensioners like I like. Um, I, I would guess maybe these housings are, are designed uh, to be used for more than one saw. Um, I work in engineering, uh, have been in product design and, and, and so forth for many years. So I know how um, 
castings and, and different parts can be shared across different different model families and so forth. So um, so the first thing I thought of when I when I was having trouble with the with the uh, the the default chain tensioner was well I got a hole there <laughs> I'll find one that fits that and and change that out to the the style I like and that could be possible. If anybody knows, maybe uh, you could add to the comments. If you maybe if you know a, uh, what particular Husqvarna model that hold is intended for, um, you know I may look into to buying the tensioner that fits on that hole. So that might be a. Um, but like I said, it, it's working fine. If it ever breaks or starts to give me more fits, um, I would I would be inclined to go that route and just uh, not use the fancy. Uh, outside tensioner I'm, I'm I'm old school so uh, the uh, the old school ma method would be fine for me um, let's see what else um, the plastic um, I've saw some reviews uh, I, I saw one gentleman's uh, YouTube video where he had a break in the tank I guess maybe in that area um, I'm not really sure um, but he was running in a real cold condition. I haven't noticed any problems with that, but you know, it doesn't seem that uh, flimsy or or prone to break. Um, seems fine to me. The the um, the fill plugs. Um, I know that there are a lot of complaints on these leaking. It's I don't, I'm not sure if you can see or not, but there's a little bit of seepage right there. This tank is about three quarters full. And there's a little seepage. Yeah, I think you can see it. I can see it in the in the camera. That's all I ever see as far as a leak. And I think that's just because me, you know, the, the tank's full. I'm flipping this around. That gas is building up a little pressure. Um, that's all I ever see there. And I never see any sort of leak, leak at all off the oil side. Um, it's never leaked. Um, usually if that seepage is there, I might snug it up a little, but I, I, I've had this saw about three weeks now and it's been sitting on a concrete floor and, um, all, all I get is a little seepage, no real leaks other than, uh, leftover oil dripping, you know, dripping down from that area. But that's, or, or I guess it's more this area. I thought I was on the other side of the saw, but dripping down from below the oil or here. But that's normal. I mean, you know, you can tell <laughs> that my oiler is definitely working because uh, everything's nice and oily, like I like to I like to see. Um, uh, one thing that I may want to point out is that right there. Um, I was kind of curious what that was, that little opening, and that's actually a vent for the oil tank. So that's something to check every time you pull the bar off and clean it. Um, make sure that that. Um, that that is uh, able to vent there. Um, let's see. That's pretty much what I had to... The, the things I had questions on. Um, this carburetor, um, the design here, this kind of floats. There's two plastic rubbery pieces that support the rear, and then it's attached by that, uh, by this flexible... Um, uh, duct there floats around the the gas lines the impulse and the gas line to me seem all right they seem flexible and and everything seems good there um, I don't know how good of quality that is and I don't know how that's going to look in a few years whether those dry out or not and this is the vent for the for the gas tank comes up in that location um, two screws one here and one here to pull the carburetor out. It's fairly easy to get to. Um, uh, I think that's pretty much everything I had. Let me, let me roll this around and see if I can think of any other questions I had before I bought the, the saw. Uh, once again, you know, I gave 300 bucks for this. I was really, uh, I didn't know what to expect. Um, you know, I knew it's a Chinese knockoff of a really good, high-quality saw. I was really easy with it at first, <laughs> really easy, because I was afraid the plastic was going to break or or this or that. Um, but uh, you know, Saturday I was pretty hard on it. I was pretty hard, and I was treating it like, uh, you know, like one of my other saws. Um, 
I'm not real real hard with them. I don't throw them around and, and abuse them, but I was really putting some pressure on it, uh, making the cuts and so forth, and it was taking everything I could throw at it. Um, I really like the power. Uh, it's got uh, uh, plenty of power for, for this, you know, I, I, just, I cut it on firewood. That's what I needed the saw for. Plenty of power for that. Um, it does have an NGK spark plug, <laughs> just in case you wondered if, you know, if it comes with a Japanese spark, I mean, a, a Chinese spark plug, it, it's an NGK. I assume that's a real NGK. It looks like an NGK. I put NGK in all my uh, saws and uh, trimmers, blowers. Um, I put NGK in everything and I, I, I like those, never had any problems with those. Um, I guess that's about. Uh, I guess that's about it. It did come with. Let me see if I have those. It came with these uh, spikes, dogs, whatever you want to call these. Um, came with came with a set of these. I had these on there at first. Um, a little embarrassed to admit this, but I kept catching that one on the back of my leg, the calf of my leg as I was walking. I, I usually carry the carry the saw by the handle and I kept catching that one I actually I doled it up with a file so it wouldn't be so sharp and uh, then I switched to these smaller which I, I think are basically knockoffs of the the real uh, Husqvarna you know what what the 3XP 372XP would come with um, I didn't these didn't come with the saw I bought these off eBay or, or I'm sorry Amazon um, and well, that's upside down. Um, I don't know. Uh, I kind of don't like these either. I, I, I need something somewhere in between. I, and these are too big for the trees around here. You know, the, the bark that, that we have is not really that. I don't need anything that aggressive. But these are a little not aggressive enough. So I'm, I'm thinking I may cut these down and, and customize those. But uh, it, it, it uh, I don't know. I, I I haven't found, haven't found a, a, what I want to do there yet. Um, the spring mechanism on the trigger, I saw some questions about that um, on YouTube and different, you know, Facebook. Feels good to me. I mean, these these are these feel uh, ever bit the same as, as my Echo saws, as far as the tension and the amount of force it takes to to uh, you know to pull those and push those in. Um, seems fine. I don't I don't think there's uh, too much of a problem there. Uh, I could be wrong, you know, they could snap at any moment. Who knows? Um, but uh, I think that's it. I think that's about all I wanted to cover, unless I think of something else. And uh, um, I think I'm going to shut off the video now and get this thing cleaned up and uh, back together and ready to get at it again. Thank you.